And I want to know, am I talking to anybody that loves God more than your beliefs? <laughs> Woo! When you love your beliefs more than God, you will change God to fit your beliefs. But when you love your God more than your beliefs, when God exposes us to a deficiency in the way we've been believing or practicing our spirituality, you will let go of a belief to hold on to a God. So this is the kind of conversation that Paul is having with believers in Corinth. He's trying to get them to see, I'm trying to get you to change the way you live in. Not because this way is simply right. He says, I'm trying to get you to change the way you live in because this way I'm introducing you to is better. He says, I want to show you, I want to show you better. And so he's having this, this conversation with them I don't know if we ready. For, I don't even know if I got time now. Where, but let me, let me just, I'll finish it wins, but let me just dip my toe in the water here because the transition he's trying to get them to make will is a religious transition. Uh-oh. Yep. He's talking to them in 2 Corinthians 3 actually about the new covenant. Is that right? I said, is that right? He, he calls himself a minister of the new covenant. He's trying to get them to see that their old practices can get them to a new level. So in order to, in order to elevate them so that they desire the new covenant, he's got to expose them to the deficiencies in the old one. I'm going to say that one more time, change church. In, <laughs> in order in order to elevate them and to get them to pursue the new covenant, he's got to expose the deficiencies of the old one. And they've got to be emotionally mature enough and spiritually flexible enough to get exposed to a deficiency without being offended. Did you hear what I just said? I said, did you hear what I just said? He's letting them know, hey, I'm not hating on this. I'm telling you that this is not sufficient for where you want to go. And so he has to expose the deficiency to create in them a desire to pursue God's best. They're spiritually settling, but they don't know it. They don't even know, Tario, another level exists. So they don't have an appetite for it because they don't know it exists. So he has to expose to them the deficiencies of the level that they own and introduce them to the possibility that maybe there's more to this than what you're experiencing. And just because you aren't experiencing it doesn't mean it's not a reality. It's just not a reality for you. And I want to know, am I talking to anybody that loves God more than your beliefs? <laughs> Woo! When you love your beliefs more than God, you will change God to fit your beliefs. But when you love your God more than your beliefs, when God exposes us to a deficiency in the way we've been believing or practicing our spirituality, you will let go of a belief to hold on to a God. And I promise you, God will not pry your hands off of one thing to put something else in your hands that is inferior to what he took away from you. He will be a debtor to no one. And so he will not take something from you and give you something less in exchange. So when he tries to pull some of these things from out of our heart, stop fighting the process and say, God is uncomfortable, but have your way. I'm a little confused, but have your way. I'm a little nervous, but have your way. I need some clarity, but have your way. Because I don't want to hold on to anything that's holding me back. Listen, when you get better spiritually, everything get better. 
Spiritual life is not the only important part of your life. It is the most important part of your life because it affects every other part that's important. But you don't get stronger spiritually accidentally. It takes intentionality. You need to get fed and you got to learn how to understand, how to interpret, how to apply and how to explain the Bible. The Bible is the blueprint to your best life. And I'm going to tell you, Sunday's not enough to give you the tools that you need to get better with the Bible. I want you to join me in my community called Bible You, where I help you take your understanding, your application, and your explanation of the Bible to another level. I want another level. I want to know, am I talking to anybody in this room that not only wants another level, but you refuse to not have it? I want to know, is there anybody that has made a decision that this level is no longer an option? If I'm talking to you, let me hear you give God praise for 10 seconds. If I'm making sense, wave at me. So let, let me get very practical here. Let me get very practical. In order for God to take my prayer life to the next level, one of the things he may have to do is expose the deficiencies in my current one. And so when he exposes the deficiencies in my current one, my reaction to that reveals whether or not I love my beliefs more than God a God more than my beliefs. Are y'all here? Now, there, there are examples of this all throughout the Gospels, guys. All throughout the Gospels. Literally, there's an instance where Jesus' disciples are trying to perform an exorcism. They're trying to cast out a demon, right? So uh, it is a, 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 a child of a father they're trying to cast a demon out of. They're unable to do so. The father gets frustrated, so he finds Jesus. He brings his child to Jesus and says, I brought my son to your team, and your team could not cast them out. They couldn't fix him. Jesus, I don't even have time to bother this, asked the man, do you believe? He said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. See, I love his honesty, because what you're about to see is he still got the miracle, even though there is some duality. Did you hear what I just said? And I think sometimes we give, we give way more credit to our faith than we should. We should be giving that credit to God's grace. Because some stuff you got, you believed and you didn't believe, y'all aren't talking to me. The only reason you're surprised is you didn't quite believe. But my Bible says, he will do exceedingly and abundantly above all you ask or think. My Bible says, your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard, your heart has not conceived what God has in store. I don't know who this is for. I'm getting ready to speak this over this house today. You are about to be surprised. I want somebody that wants it to throw your hands up and say, surprise. Surprise me. Surprise me this week. Surprise me this month. Surprise me before the year's out. There's some stuff I said in January that I didn't think was possible because we're in October. But take these last three months and surprise me. Blow my mind. Surprise. Am I making sense? So it's, I can't be expen offended by the exposure. I can't be offended when God showed me it's another way to do it. I can't be offended when God says, tweak this right here. I can't be offended when God says, I've been letting you get away with that as long as I've been letting you get away with it. But that doesn't mean I'm okay with it. I can't get offended when God says, 
this is far as you can go doing it that way. Am I in the house today? I said, am I in the house? I want to know, is anybody ready for God to shake some stuff up? But he can't shake some stuff up without shaking some stuff up. And we want God to shake some stuff up without shaking some stuff up. And Paul says to these people of Corinth, listen, I know y'all are accustomed to it this way. I mean, honestly, if you look at a lot of Paul's letters, like you got some, some Corinth, Galatians, uh, Hebrews, this is one of his major fights. It's trying to get people to let go of ways of practicing their religion that are reflective of the old covenant and not the new one. I don't have time. And even though we live in a new covenant era, we still, many of us, have old covenant mindsets. Did you hear what I just said? And so the same battle that the Holy Spirit was trying to fight through Paul is the same battle the Holy Spirit is fighting now. And he's trying to expose to us the inferiority of some of these practices and pull us into another level. And am I talking to anybody that wants another level in your life spiritually? Lord, Well, I want you to know that Paul not only tells us that it is possible, he tells us how it's possible. It's in the text. This is what he says. He says that we, with an unveiled face, beholding in a mirror, as the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. To glory. Glory, glory, glory. Did y'all hear me? He says, you're being transformed into what you, the image of the Lord. So it says, so you've been, who, who is that? That's Jesus. All right? So I'm being transformed. That's formation. Into that. But this is how it's happening. I'm done, Tario. They tired. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> Here it is. From glory to glory. He said, I'm going to do it but it's not going to be immediately. You don't go from all the way here to all the way there. He says, I'm going to do it from glory to glory. I'm going to do it from level to level. I I'm not going to do it all immediately. I'm going to do it incrementally. Just because I hadn't done it all doesn't mean I'm not going to do it all. I got to go. Stop panicking. I'm going to do it all. Stop worrying. I'm going to do it all. Stop spazzing out. I'm going to do it all. Stop complaining. I'm going to do it all. Stop stressing. I'm going to do it all. I'm just not going to do it all at one time. 